Will the truth of Wanda Maximoff's death end up setting all of Krakoa free? Well, let's hop into the pages of The Trial of Magneto, issue number 5, the grand finale of this miniseries, and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up directly from where the last issue had left off, Wanda had managed to defeat a series of monsters that were born out of her own magical instability. Again, it must be a day that ends in Y. Before the island can completely turn on her all over again, though, it's time for Wanda to finally reveal the truth about her murder. The Avengers say that Scarlet Witch need not fear as they will stay and protect her from anyone who would want to do her harm. And with that, the question is finally answered, and the true culprit is ultimately revealed to be Toad. Yeah, Toad did it. Even though he was never a suspect and only appeared in, like, what, one panel of this series? Yeah, it was him. But why did he do it? Well, to dust off an old wrestling chestnut, he did it for The Rock. I mean, he did it for Magneto and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Toad blamed one Wanda for turning her back on both of them, even though all of that happened like forever ago when he was still nursing that grudge even now, that doesn't make much sense. Nor does anyone bother to question how exactly Toad, one of the lamest X-Men villains, managed to get his hands on a piece of magical Uru metal that allowed him to kill the Scarlet Witch. But more on that in a minute, for his crimes, Toad is punished with exile, which is of course a fancy Krakoan word for we're gonna let the island eat you and you can keep Orphan Maker and Sabretooth Company. The Avengers, who are still on hand for all of this, are plenty horrified, but they don't want to get involved and start an international incident by passing judgment on another country's cultures. Also, despite everything that happened to her, Scarlet Witch actually steps up to Toad's defense and tries to get him out of his punishment. After all, he didn't murder any man, so he didn't technically break Krakoa's laws, and because she's back to life now, it should really be a wash, shouldn't it? If this all seems way too simple, it's because it totally is. The comic ends up stepping back to the Night of the Hellfire Gala, and we, the reader, are treated to the actual version of events. As it turns out, Scarlet Witch had actually come to her father, Magneto, after discovering the truth about the mutant resurrection protocols. She was hoping these protocols could be used on her, and that it could be her way back into her father's good graces, and into mutant society as a whole. Using her magic power, Scarlet Witch was able to fake a crime scene, and create a piece of Uru metal that she used to kill herself. Yes, that's right. Who killed the Scarlet Witch? Well, it was Wanda Maximoff. It would be Magneto's job to find the body and stall the Quiet Council long enough for Hope and the Five to resurrect Scarlet Witch. Which, I guess, means she got resurrected as a mutant, though the book doesn't outright say it one way or another. Well, alright then. Magneto and Scarlet Witch's plan worked, but how is Krakoa ever going to accept Scarlet Witch when the Quiet Council, including Magneto, tried so hard to turn her into a boogie man figure of their new culture. Well, as it turns out, Wanda actually has an answer for that, but she can't do it alone. To do it, she's going to need to recruit some prodigal sons of mutant kind, including Polaris, Proteus, and even Legion. Yeah, I don't know how Legion is back on the island and accepted himself, considering how Way of X ended, but just go with it or the rest of the story doesn't make any sense. Also, Proteus ends up questioning why he's involved in this brand new little coven, considering as far as he knew, his mother was human and never actually said foot on Krakoa. Oops, I guess Magneto let Wanda in on the big secret, huh? But don't worry about that right now, because Scarlet Witch uses the powers of these prodigal children to create a brand new arcane circuit very similar to what the five have been doing. By using magic and all these amazing mutant powers, Wanda is able to tap into the Eldritch Orchard, that strange white dimension we had seen previously, turning it into a mutant Elysium. What does this actually mean? Well, as it turns out, all the mutants that Wanda Wanda either killed or depowered or erased when her own powers were going nuts, well, they're back now, essentially. Or they can be brought back now via the power of the five, including longtime fan favorite John Proudstar, aka the original Thunderbird. Whoa, hey now, book, don't make me fall in love with you right here at the very end by bringing back one of my favorite X-Men who's been gone for over a decade now. They also seek to imply that this new Elysium method of resurrection is a counterpoint to what Magneto and Apocalypse were doing with the Crucible, but they don't really go into great depths about how. And as the comic comes to a close, Magneto and Scarlet Witch go to one of those fireside storytelling sessions with all the children, only this time Wanda actually steps on in and takes control of her own story. No longer is she Scarlet Witch the Great Mutant Betrayer, now
now she's Scarlet Witch, the great mutant redeemer of souls. Not a bad upgrade, if you ask me. And so that was X-Men Trial of Magneto issue number five, everybody. A bit of an uneven conclusion to what was ultimately a really uneven series. Now, don't get it twisted. I like where the story ultimately left stuff off. I'm glad Wanda is finally accepted as a mutant again. I'm glad that a lot of her sins have been unwritten. And that there's a lot of potential now to bring back a ton of different X-Men fan favorite characters from across time and space. I just wish the trip to get there wasn't so needlessly messy. I mean, really, you could have cut two whole issues from this series and it would have ended up being much better in the long run, I feel. Still not totally sure why this ended up being called The Trial of Magneto, either it was a Scarlet Witch-centric story through and through, and Magneto never actually goes on trial. Also, was needing to die and come back an important step in Scarlet Witch creating the mutant Elysium, or could she just have done that at any old time? Also, what was up with Toad? Did Magneto tell him to take the fall and he did so because he was such a good soldier to the Brotherhood, or did they actually frame him for a crime he didn't commit? If so, Scarlet Witch seems kind of shitty despite all the good she ends up doing later. For what it's worth, though, I will say that last panel is a very strong image of Scarlet Witch coming on in and literally taking the reins of her own life and her own story again. I just wish the rest of the book was as good as that one image was. Overall, I think I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 6.5 out of 10. It does a lot of necessary heavy lifting, has some fun moments here and there, but drops a lot of other balls as well. A shame, too, that this has to be the last word on X Factor as well. The group brought together to solve mutant mysteries didn't actually solve the mystery in their final outing. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.